Previously on the bill. Four eight show with Dylan, please. Where are you off to? Uh, I'm taking Mel out. I've not introduced her to the relief yet. Remind me not to get on the wrong side of you. I'm a pussy cat, really, sir. So you're like Mother Teresa and Lara Croft, all rolled into one. How are you settling into the big city? Not too much of a culture shock, I hope. Yeah, I'm really missing the sheep. And uh, I can't always work that newfangled electricity. The Industrial Revolution did make it to Leeds, you know, Nathaniel. All units from Sierra Oscar. Witness report armed robbery at McKay's Jewelers. Suspects in black leathers and helmets on a motorbike, possibly carrying handguns. Trojan unit assigned. Await further instructions. Over. Sierra Oscar from Sierra Oscar 2 1. Show is assigned and nearby. Over. We're not going to wait for CO19, are we? It's three streets away, so there's a 50-50 chance they're coming this way. What do you think? Oi, oi. They're switch motors, aren't they? We didn't pass anyone driving suspiciously. Well, you wouldn't once they made a swap. You'll need to check the CCTV. Cameras don't last five minutes on the Jasmine Allen. I can't Sierra believe we lost them. Sierra Oscar, report of an RTC on Walco Road, over. Sierra Oscar 2-1, show us dealing. That's a spit from here. Hardly oh, a coincidence, is it? Well, coincidence or not, you better head over there. I've got a meeting with the superintendent. I'll brief CIG when I'm there. Well, that's quite a statement. Sierra Oscar, report of an RTC on Walco Road, over. I've got a meeting with the superintendent. I'll brief CIG whilst I'm there. Give me posted. Does it mean? Or anyone else just experience a whirlwind? Mm. Whirlwind ain't the word, mate. Sarah, 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 what's the show's dealing? I don't know, who was that? That, my young Millie, is your new sergeant. Go up, chop, chop. Driver's leg ditch. She's not looking so good, Tyrone. Okay, mate. What's your name? Robin. How old are you, Robin? Twelve. Are you hurt anywhere? I'm fine. Did you see what happened when the van hit you? No. Don't worry, we'd better get you to a hospital, get you checked out. Your mum's gonna be just fine, these guys know what we're doing, yeah? Just wait there for a moment. Victims of Christine Chollerton, 36 Vincent Street. Sorry, from 595. Can I have a PNC check, please? On a blue for transit van registration, Papa 195, Mike Kilo uniform. Okay, what do you reckon? It's not in the van when we got here. Am my runner? My guess is our blaggers T bone a car, panicked, then did a runner. Probably into that estate over there. There's a chance for a squad car scene. Well, the index is registered to a vicar who lives in Southport. So either he's a long way from home or they're false police. Right, let's check the van for any personal stuff, then get it down to forensics for CID to check out. Ah, Kezia, Mickey. This is Sergeant Rachel West, and she's just started with us today. DC Mickey Webb, welcome to the Lions Den. DC Walker. Hello. Uh, we've got an armed robbery on a jewellers in Camber Road. The owner is Philip Mackay. According to CO19 Sergeant, two men went in waving guns around, emptied several trays of jewellery and left. The whole thing was over in a minute. Anybody hurt? Fortunately not. A witness phoned him from a shop across the street. CO19 got there as fast as they could, but the robbers were off on a bike by then. 
uniform picked them up and then we lost them on the Jasmine Allen. Textbook. They use pedestrian waterways and they switch vehicles. But we may be in luck. There was an RTC two minutes away from where the robbery happened and the driver did a runner. Not being a big believer in coincidences, I suspect it's the vehicle they switched to. Some of my officers are at the scene now. OK, we'll, we'll go down to Canberra. Where were the jeweller? If it's all the same, I'd like to oversee this one. Sure. Well, I'll come with you. That's all right. Never mind. Yeah, go for it. What's that? Keep me posted. Mr Mackay, Sergeant Rachel Weston, oh. Sun Hill. How are you feeling? Well, I don't know what was worse. That scum that turned me over or your lot storming in like a war zone. Well, we do have to take precautions where firearms are concerned, I'm afraid. How much did the thieves get away with? Oh, loads of stuff. Rings, necklaces, brooches, maybe 30, 40 grand's worth. I haven't had a chance to check the inventory yet. OK, I'll need you to make a list of everything that was taken and photos, if possible. You'll need to keep a copy for your insurance and I'll give you a crime number when you put it together. Thanks. Today work? Oh, yeah. Not that it'll give you much. Like I said, they never showed their faces. The witness who made the 999 call couldn't give me any more than she would have given uniform. Two fellas wearing leathers carrying guns. Yeah, that sounds about right. Do you normally let people in wearing motorcycle helmets? Don't you have some sort of security buzzer? Yeah, yeah, I do, but I was busy and I was expecting a package by courier. I only saw the one bloke at first, and then suddenly there's two of them. More than that, I can't tell you, really. Listen, I'll go to uniform, see how search going to the artist. OK, soon. thanks. If you could get us the CCTV disc, please, Mr McKay. Yeah, Mickey, we're already on to it, OK? No problem. CID, tell us how to do our job again. Want us to go make a thorough search of the surrounding area. Which we thought about. Um, the husband's making his way to St Hughes, so I'm going to go with Robin and Christine and meet him there. Gary Charlton? Yes? Your wife's this way. Is she OK? They don't think it's much worse than a concussion. Thank God. Your son's down here too. He's absolutely fine, but they're just checking out as a precaution. Oh, sorry, my son? Yeah, he wasn't hurt in the accident. Like... You're sure it's my wife you brought in? We think so. Why? We don't have a son. Wait here, please, Mr Charlton. Oi! Stop! Stop! Right, give it up! OK. Robin, if that is your real name. Oi! Hold still while I check your pockets. I ain't done nothing. Yeah, you know. Where'd you get these from? Never seen it before in my life. <sighs> Come on, where did you get them? Bull one. You weren't in the car all this morning, were you? You were in the van. You might as well tell me your real name, because I'm going to find out anyway. No comment. I want a social worker, and I want to report you for brutality. Eva, you watch a lot of telly, or this isn't the first time you've been in trouble. Which means we'll have a record of you. Ah, is this the boy that you think was in the van from the RTC this morning? Yes, this is him. Only he thinks he's Rumpelstiltskin, so he wants us to guess his name. Did he have an Oyster card on him? I oh, was saving that for a surprise. See this? I bet this is registered, isn't it? So all I have to do is run the serial number through the computer. You don't have to tell me anything because it's all in the system. I want to report her excessive force. He's tried this one already. Look what she's done to me. Robin, those are old bruises. Where did you get them? No, they ain't. You do them. We're not stupid. Has someone hurt you? We can investigate this. We can help. It was rough a try. I got him skateboarding. Must have been a pretty bad fall. It was. So where did you do this? That park. The one near the canal. Which of your mates saw you bail? Don't remember. Ages back. Mel, can I have a word, please? Can you run his oyster card through the system and book him in, please? And give social services a call. Let's just focus on the arm robbery for now, OK? I, I am, but you've seen his bruises. I mean, he, he can't be older than 12. Like, what happened to him to mess him up like that? Like you said, an accident. Kids have them all the time. I appreciate your concern for him, but let's focus on the fact he may have been in the getaway vehicle from the arm robbery this morning, OK? Sure, Sarge. Good. 
I've run a check on the van and the motorcycle. Now, the van, that was stolen in 2003. It's probably been through dozens of dodgy owners since then, so that's a cold trail. The Suzuki, now, that was stolen between 11 and midnight last night. The owner reported it at 12.10 a.m., and he's got a cast iron alibi for this morning. There's something strange about this one. Yeah? How did they know Mackay would let him in wearing that get up? Maybe they had a contact at the courier service if they know they had a delivery coming. Maybe we could check. Hold up a minute, freeze that. Look at the curves in the waist. That's a woman. How did I miss that one? Our boy is Robin Pressman. He came up on MISPA. He's been missing from a children's unit for a couple of months. He's been in care since he was five. His father's been inside for aggravated burglary and his mum's a junkie. He's got petty form, shoplifting, vandalism, but nothing major. Except now he's involved with a couple of armed robbers. And wherever he's been, someone's given him a right kick in at some point. I mean, he's got these nasty-looking bruises. This one's getting weirder by the minute. First off, a man and a woman pull off an armed robbery and then leave a 12-year-old runaway in the back of a getaway van. We put a call through to his key worker at Calico Street Kids Unit. She's on her way down here to take him through his interview. Mickey, would you mind seeing if there's any news from forensics on the van? And Kezia, can you keep an eye on the search team at Walcott Road? Let me know if anything comes up. Do you want to sit in on Robin's interview? You've had the most contact with him. Sure. Karen Chester, Sergeant Rachel Weston, this is PC Mal Ryder. Uh, is Robin okay? Has he said where he's been? We were waiting for you to get here before we asked him all that. But he's fine. He has been involved in a minor road accident, but he hasn't got any injuries. We are concerned about some older bruising that we found on his back. What kind of boy is Robin? Is he the type to get involved in fights? Well, I mean, he's a handful, but he's not a violent type. I mean... Has he said how he got them? A skateboarding accident. Oh, yeah, that'd be right. He's a menace on that thing. It was all we could do to stop him from using it inside the unit. That's not why he's here, though, I'm afraid. We think Robin was in the back of a vehicle we suspect was used to get away from an armed robbery. We love that. You're serious, aren't you? Well, Robin's just a little kid. He'd never get involved in something like that. I'm afraid he had jewelry in his pockets when he was arrested. All right. Is that all you've got to say for yourself? Are you going to tell me where you've been for the last two and a half months? Around. What's this about bruises? What's happened to you? It's nothing. Get off my case. Robin, this is serious. This isn't just a bit of graffiti or nicking a couple of cans of lager. They're talking about armed robbery. What armed robbery? If you don't mind, we need to be asking the question. Sorry. It's just I've been worried sick. I've got nothing to do with no armed robbery. So what were you doing with several pieces of stolen jewellery in your pockets when you were arrested? I found them on the ground, didn't I? Come on, Robin. Who are they? I ain't telling you anything. Got forensics all over the van. Forensics from the crime scene. We'll find out who they are. So why'd you need me? Look, it's good that you're sticking up for your friends, but whoever was driving was in a rush. No time to wipe it clean, which means we will find them. Robin, are you scared of them? We're only looking after me. Who were? Have you found your mum, Robin? No. He was always running away when he was younger. He was looking for his mum. Uh, excuse me, I am here. OK, then. If you won't tell us who your friends are, we'll have to treat you as the main suspect. They're called Steve Rose and Scarlett Pratt. They've got a squat on the Jasmine Allen estate, Beveridge House, number 27. And were you with them this morning at around 9.20? Yeah. We were heading off to check out the new squat. We were just driving along, and next thing I hear is Steve swearing and Scarlett screaming, and then smack. We piled out the van, and Steve and Scarlett told me to leg it. But I was worried about the woman in the car, so I decided to stay with her until the ambulance arrived. So you're telling us your two friends, Steve and Scarlett, played no part in any armed robbery? Of course they didn't. And these are the two friends who left you at the scene of an accident and didn't come back for you? Look, you've got it wrong. They're not like that. One stop glam on this job, isn't it? Wait till the knees start going. Never mind your house, mates. Coppers have it a lot worse. The town? There's another one identical in a bag. Replicas by the look of it. I'm finding the good news. What's a 12 year old boy doing living in a squat with a couple of strangers? He's got a lot of attitude. I can't see anyone taking advantage of him, but there's something wrong there. The squatters, have they got any form? Um, Steve Rose has got petty for cannabis, public nuisance, ABH, and we haven't got anything on the girl, Scarlett. They don't sound like armed robber types. Thanks, Tony. Tony and Nate found the gun, sir. Replicas, apparently. 
think that makes it safe for us to go into our two squatters. OK, but take some back up. They're quite happy to leave a woman for dead this morning. Sir. How is the victim, by the way? Uh, yeah, she's better. Mickey's showing her what's now. Good. Keep me informed. Listen, take all the time you want, OK? And if you get tired, you can take a break. But we're very anxious to find out who crashed into you. I should think so. Chrissy could have been killed. I'm OK now the concussion's wearing off. The doctor said I've just got some bruising. Stop worrying. Can you talk us through the accident? I was driving up past Walcott Road on my way home. Next thing I knew, there was this bang. Can you remember anything about the vehicle at all? Or maybe the driver? It was a van. Scruffy old thing. I didn't really see who was in it. It's a man and a woman, maybe. But you can't describe him? Sorry, it was all over so quick. OK, look, do you want to have a look at some photographs? See if anything's familiar? Sure. My wife's very tired. It's OK, Gary. OK. Give us a shout if anyone rings a bell. I don't really remember seeing anyone's face. OK, not to worry. Listen, just to let you know, we're putting all our resources into this. And we've got some strong leads already, OK? What do you reckon the deal is with these two and the kid, then? I don't buy that skateboarding story at all. The kid looks like he's taking a right battery. It's really got to you, hasn't he? Social services are sorted out. They know what they're doing. And he's right. Helen's trained in this sort of thing. If there's been any of you, she'll find out. You idiot! Get out of here! Come on! Hey! You! Is there a problem, sir? I mean, with this lot, lousy squatters, the rest of us pay rent, why can't they? I think there's better ways of handling it, sir. Did you do that? Not me. The old block hates them. We just want them gone. Can we take your name, please? Colin Wren. I live on the fourth floor. And I am sick of this lot playing their music at all hours! So why don't you go back up there and write a letter to your council, Mr Wren, before we start talking about criminal damage? Nice haircut. I'm guessing that's sartorial elegance for Jasmine Allen. Bad for a squat, is it? Ah, looks like they were getting ready to move on. This van. What? This is all from this morning. Well, that must be where they rented it from. Got a lead. Cafe on Goddard Street. You can turn this place over. We'll check it out. Cool. Bring us back a bacon sarni. Sorry, Tony. It's vegan. Just my luck. Seen him all day. Okay. Says he hasn't seen him all day. Well, we know that's a life for a start. Two cakes, two bags, cups are still there. Excuse me. Who's hiding in here then? Steve Rose and Scarlett Pratt. I'm arresting you on suspicion of armed robbery. Armed robbery? How many armed robbers you know hang out in vegan cafes? There's no sign of jewellery at the squat. Maybe they stashed it somewhere. They must have been thinking on their feet if they did. No sign of the proceeds from the robbery yet. They didn't have anything on them. I've sent Tony, Millie and Nate to turn the cafe over. You and Kezia talked to Steve. Me and Mel will work on Scarlet. She doesn't have any form and she just doesn't seem the type to be waving a gun around. My guess is, is she was coerced and so if she's scared she'll talk. And what about Robin? The robbery's our priority, I'm afraid. Chin up here. Where's Robin? Is he all right? We went back for him, but he'd gone. Robin's fine. We want to talk to you about this morning. Well, what have you done with him? He'll be going back to the kids' unit in Calico Street. 
where he should be. No, that's not right. He's a smart kid, independent. He shouldn't be kept in some sort of institution. He needs help and supervision. And Calico Street is not an institution. At least he won't get hurt there. Can you talk us through your movements from this morning, please? From when you woke up? We got up about half eight, had some breakfast, went down a calf. What, after your breakfast? They've got a van. We've used it before. When we're squatting someplace new. You're going anywhere near Camber Street? That's the other side of the state. Why would I? So you've nowhere near Mackay's jewellers? Why don't you check with Big Brother? There's cameras all over the street by the calf. Check it out. Quarter past nine this morning. You'll see us picking up the van. Where did you go once you picked up the van? We went to pick Robin up to drive over to the empty flat we found on the Larkmead estate. We were going to get in, fix new locks, start a bit of work on it. We had to get off the Jasmine Allen. Why was that? We've been having problems with the neighbours. Anyone in particular? Not really. Well, what do they think about you having a 12-year-old boy around with you? I mean, they must have been suspicious. You don't look old enough to be his mother. No one said anything about him to us. So, you were driving through the Larkmead estate? Yeah. Just uh, driving up Walcott Road, about to pass the T-junction onto the road. And bang! This car comes out of nowhere, right in front of me. There was nothing I could do. So they sent the accidents their fault? Totally. They didn't even stop to give way or nothing. God knows how I hit the brakes in time, but I managed to put the anchors on enough so he didn't carve straight through her. You gonna see if she was OK? Sorry. No. I legged it. Pretty cold. I got a criminal record, no licence, no insurance, the van's bent, and I'm a squatter who's just banged into a respectable lady in a nice car. Do the maths. So you just left her? No. I told Robin to call 999. She wasn't that badly hurt. Anyway, it's not me you should be having a go at. It's a bloke in the passenger seat who pegged it and left her there. Which passenger seat? Of the car we hit. He just threw the door open and ran off up the alley. So you're saying there was a man in the car with Chrissy Chollerton that left the scene of the accident? That's exactly what I'm saying. Gary and Chrissy Chollerton don't seem to fit the frame as armed robbers. They're middle-class shop owners. They haven't got any form. Steve's adamant about his alibi. And the description he gave us of the bloke running away from the accident is a spot-on match for Gary. It's the same as the one that Scarlett gave Rachel. Did you ask Steve about Robin's bruising? Kezia, I need you to dig up everything you can on Chrissy and Gary Chollerton. Financial background, parking tickets, anything like that. Sure. What about Steve and Scarlett? We need to follow up on Robin's injuries. Steve didn't mention anything about Robin. We didn't ask him, to be honest. Do you really think this boy might have been at risk? I don't know, sir, but I'd really like to speak to Robin again. Something doesn't sit right. With respect, sir, this is an armed robbery. I appreciate that, but this might be a child at risk. It won't do any harm to talk to him again now. Thanks. Let's get to the hospital and speak to Christy Johnson. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the right ward. Patient was in that room. Uh, Hello. Do you know where she is? Yeah. She's checked out. She's checked out. Okay, I figured out anyway. No, All right, cheers. All right, thank you. Okay, the CCTV from the cafe confirmed Stephen Scarlett's story. There's no way they could have pulled the robbery off from the cars. Chrissy Tolleton's just checked herself out of hospital with her husband. What, with a head injury? Exactly. The hospital staff are concerned. They didn't tell anyone. They were leaving. They just vanished. Let's get someone over to the house. If they're not there, tell them to hang around. Let's keep an eye on the place. So, what's the deal with Robin and his parents? From what you said earlier, I take it his mum's still out of the picture. Well, she's probably holed up somewhere. I don't know where she's even got a kid anymore. So, what about his dad? Does he ever see him? Well, he used to send Robin visiting orders from prison. Um, twice a week. But not for a few months now. I guess Robin never went, so we got the hint. Hi, Robin. We're checking out Steve and Scarlett's alibi from this morning, but it looks like you were telling the truth. I oh, know. Well, uh, I'm glad. I didn't have to send your mates away. Why has she been so nice to me all of a sudden? <sighs> we're just worried about you, that's all. These injuries. So, um, how did you meet Steve and Scarlett? I was doing a bit of begging. Uh, they gave me a quid and we got chain. And I told them I had nowhere to stay. 
So they invited me back to theirs? Just like that. How many times have I told you about talking to strangers? They're a laugh. They wouldn't hurt me. They're mates. But not now I've got them, I suppose. Are you worried that Steve might be angry? Does he get angry a lot? Robin, has Steve ever hit you or Scarlett? We just had a laugh, all right? Nobody hit anybody, nobody tried to make me do anything I didn't want to do. That's why I like being there. I could do what I wanted. So how did you get the bruises? Look, I told you. This is stupid. I don't want to talk about it anymore. But I don't want to talk about it. I think we should. There's no point in pushing him when he gets like that. Oh, Trust me. I know, but... I know there's more. But he's probably telling the truth. He's nobody's fool. Okay, but if he wants to talk, then this is my number. But can you make sure he gets it, please? Yeah, of course. Thanks for that, Tony. No sign of life at the Charlton's place. What have we got on them so far? No criminal record, but you're gonna love this. You wanna lay odds on Chrissy Charlton's maiden name? Kai? Mm-hmm. How'd you find that out without a marriage certificate? Oh, she's on about four different social networking sites. I swear these criminals are just making it easier and easier for us. And I ran an FIU check on both Mackay and Gary Charlton. Now, Gary's retail outlet went into receivership over two years ago, and Mackay owes thousands to the VAT. Let's say we've got a connection then. Mm -hmm. Do you think you could Photoshop that picture to look like an ether? Uh, yeah, or something like one. OK. How did it go? I'm going to go to court for driving without a licence and no insurance. And they're keeping me waiting about the other stuff. How's Robin? He's fine. I saw him settled in earlier. Um, whose idea was it to take him in? Was it yours? Steve's, actually. Well, did you not think about going to the authorities? And what would they do? Send him back to a home? He'd only run away again. You know what these streets are like. Anyone could have got at him. We gave him somewhere safe. Out of the goodness of your heart. You've been doing this job too long. Yes, out of the goodness of my heart. I know what he's going through. I know what it's like walking the streets at 12 years old, right? Unless you do, I'd say you don't have any right to question my motives. Here we go. That's a list of everything they got away with. OK, thank you, Mr Mackay. We'll have this circulated. Oh, that's your crime number for your insurance. Oh, thanks. I'll get on to it right away. Oh, there was just one thing. We've got a picture of a man we believe has been seen in the area. We think he might have been casing the shop, making notes of delivery times, that sort of thing. Does he look familiar at all? I've not seen him around. Not to worry. We'll let you know if there's any progress. Seems Mr Mackay hasn't seen our suspect before. Really? That's interesting, because three other traders have fingered him immediately as being your brother-in-law, Mr Gary Charlton. He used to work here part-time. <laughs> I'm, I'm not good with faces. He used to work for you. He married your sister. How bad with faces can you be? I'm afraid you're next, Mr Mackay. Let's go. So, Mr Mackay. You've been to the hospital today. Sorry? What's this got to do with anything? Did you not know that your sister had been in a car accident? What? About ten minutes after your shop was robbed, Gary and Chrissy were in a car driving at speed when they were hit by another vehicle. Well, is she OK? I, I want to see her. Uh, sit down, please, Mr Mackay. We're not sure how she is. Your brother-in-law left her for dead at the wheel and ran away up an alley. The same alley where we recovered items of jewellery from your shop and two replica guns. But, but you got to her in time. She, she's OK. Well, she was in hospital. She left against the advice of the doctors. You think that might have been Gary's idea? I'll mother him if it was. We need to find him first. Let me tell you how I see this. You staged an insurance job with Gary and your sister. Figured you'd give him a head start before you called us. Some decent, honest citizen calls it in instead, and ever since then, all three of you have been lying through your teeth to us. That's rubbish. Look, look can we do this later, please? I want to find my sister. Yeah, so do we. The doctors didn't say she was fit to be released, so if you know where they are... You could save her life if that head injury is more than concussion, Mr Mackay. Oh. Oh. All right. Yeah. 
that's what happened. Gary said it would be easy. They walk in, walk out. I raise the alarm once they've had time to get away, just like you said. OK, so what was the plan? You collect the insurance, they sell on the jewellery, you split the profits. Gary, sell the jewellery. <laughs> that idiot would come back with magic beans. I've got a buyer for the stuff already, no questions asked. I'm supposed to meet Gary and Chrissy in a pub this afternoon. We arranged for them not to contact me. I knew your lot would be swarming all over the shop. I knew nothing about this accident, I swear. Right, the Moon and Sparrow pub. Phil Mackay has arranged to meet Gary and Chrissy Chollerton there at four o'clock today to pick up the jewellery they stole this morning. The good news is they haven't been in contact with each other as far as we know, so they'll be thinking the exchange is still on. Now, Phil Mackay's plan was to sit in the window, clearly visible from the road. If they don't see him, they're to turn round and wait for him to make contact. So we need somebody inside, right up close, at a table. We don't want him warning them off. So, Nate, Kezia, that's up to you. Rachel and Mel, I want you at the end of the bar, cutting off the emergency exit. Tony and Millie in the car park as backup. When they turn up, if they're in a vehicle, block it off. Otherwise, cover the entrance in case somebody slips out. Any questions? OK, off you go. Suspect arriving in a silver Vectra. It's Chrissy Chonerton. Here we're on. She's on her own. No sign of Gary. And she's empty-handed. You're enjoying this, aren't you? I was just trying to make a living, you know. Read your paper, please, Mr. Mackay, and don't draw attention to us. OK, we're on. Are you okay? Where's Gary? There's been a problem. There was an accident. I know, but you're all right. Gary's just trying to sort you. Listen, it's all over. What do you mean you know? What's going on? I did it for your own good, Chrissy. They were on to me. What have you done, you idiot? Okay, that's it. I'm sorry, Chrissy. What is this? Chrissy Chollerton, you are under arrest on suspicion of armed robbery. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you led to rely on in court. Anything you do say may be used in evidence. Chrissy, your solicitors informed you of the statement made by your brother, Philip Mackay, about your part in an armed robbery this morning. An armed robbery he alleges is part of an insurance fraud. He has? If it's any consolation, your brother was worried sick when you checked out of hospital. He only confessed to make sure you were all right. I was fine. <sighs> He's ruined everything. So you're not denying your involvement? There isn't much point, is there? If you cooperate with us now, I'm sure your solicitors explain things could go more easily for you in court. Looks like you know everything anyway. Well, there's still Gary and the stolen jewellery. Where is he? I'm not sure. Come on, Chrissy. He left you for dead in that crash this morning. He just took the stash and left. You can't be wanting to protect him. At least your brother was looking out for you. He came to the hospital to see me. And I thought you were going to help us out. What possessed you in the first place? Me and Gary had this little shop. Greetings cards, novelty gifts, that kind of thing. It's hard out there on the high street. We lost the business. Then Phil started to get into trouble with his tax. This was supposed to be easy, a nice, victimless crime, no one gets hurt. You did. So where's the jury now? I wish I knew. Come on, Chrissy. In the pub, you said Gary was trying to sort it. What was the plan? The two of you screw over your brother? No! We haven't got the jewellery! <sighs> Everything was going fine until those hippies rammed us. I never even saw the junction. I was so wound up. So the accident was your fault? I suppose. I wasn't thinking straight. I was petrified. OK, so the van hits you, then what happens? Those hippies took it. 
They got out of the van. Me and Gary were both in shock. They came over. There was two of them and a kid. The woman was all right. She was trying to see how I was. But the other one opened the back door and took the bag we had the stuff in. Gary's got the jewellery, hasn't he? Just tell us where he is, Chrissy. I'm cooperating here. As soon as Gary got his wits about him, he grabbed the guns and went after him, but they were too quick for him. That's why we checked out of the hospital. We've been all over that estate trying to find him. They've got the jewellery! <sighs> so the squatters had the jewellery all along. He must have stashed it somewhere else. You want to put them under surveillance, so No, Scarlet's the weak link. We'll bring them in again. I don't get this. We turned their place over with a fine tooth comb and that vegan cap. Yeah, I bet Tony didn't find his bacon sarnie. And then maybe you're right about Steve Rose. Maybe Robin is afraid of him. I don't know. So why not mention them taking the jewelry and leaving them there? But the way he talks about Steve and Scarlett, he likes them. They're his friends. Well, his friends are about to get nicked. Are you finally doing something about them crusties? Possibly comment, Mr. Ed. Yeah, well, they get what they deserve. Make sure you lock them up and throw away the key, low-life wasters. Yeah, thanks for that. Mate, yours? Neighbourhood watch, I think. Hey, come on! Hi, oh, you want to put that down for me, darling? There's a good girl. Good, that's good. good girl. Steve, are you OK? It's Gary Chollerton. We just came in and started laying in. Give it up, Steve. We know why he was here. Now your girlfriend's looking at assault, possibly GBH. Where's the jewellery? I don't know what you're talking about. Gary Chollerton stole it this morning. You stole it from him. That's why he was here, to get it back. So stop wasting my time. I'm not saying nothing. Yeah, and you've got a 12-year-old kid involved as well. Robin likes you. He trusts you. I'll leave the kid out of this. It's got nothing to do with him. Mel, I want you to get over to Calico Street and pick up Robin as an accessory to robbery. Look, he hasn't done nothing wrong. What's going on? You said they were friends, right? And if I can convince Steve that we can incriminate Robin, maybe he'll give himself up to save the boy. You and Nate go back over to the station, do some more digging into Steve and Robin's background, see if there's anything we can find. Well, let Steve think that you've arrested him. Steve Rose's previous is juvenile. Looks like he was telling the truth about growing up wild. His dad's a wrong one too. Robin's dad's a con with a violent past, right? Aggravated burglary. Yeah. So Karen said that he frequently used to send visiting orders from prison, but Robin never went. And then suddenly the VO stopped coming a few months ago. What if that's because Robin did see his dad? Like, I've been thinking this whole time this could have something to do with his past. The reason he ran away, his bruises. When I tried to speak to him about his parents, he proper clammed up. That could explain why he's so scared. I don't believe it. The angry neighbour from the estate, that's Robin's dad. The guy hammering on Stephen Scarlett's door this morning. Uh, Colin Wren? No, he lied. His name's Blake Pressman. He's Robin's dad. Look, I'm not sure what yet, but I think this whole thing's about him. OK, let's get someone over to the Jasmine Allen, bring him in, see what he has to say. Yeah, I'm not sure we'll be able to. We saw him packing a load of stuff into his boot, like he's going away somewhere. You're right. Um, we'll push Steve on what he knows about Blake Pressman, how he might be involved. You know, don't you? We know he is. Do you? He's Robin's dad. He's an animal. You met him? When we found Robin, he was on the run from his old man. I don't understand. I thought he ran away from Calico Street. Yeah, he did. Apparently his old man started hanging around the unit after he got let out. He kept meeting up with Robin, giving him some bull about how he changed. I wanted to be a proper dad again. He had a flat on Larkmead. So one day Robin packs his bag and goes to Stoven. But the honeymoon didn't last. Dad's always lying. He started drinking again. Pretty soon he's asking Robin to do little jobs for him. Screwing houses, he meant. Get through windows, that sort of thing. Robin says no. And his dad belts him all over the walls. 
That's when you found him? Yeah. Yeah, he was begging when we found him. So we let him move in. I just felt sorry for the kid. Everything was fine for a couple of months. And then one night, the door opens, no knock or nothing, and he's just stood there. He said he wanted his boy back. I need a way he said it. It was like Robin was his property or something. That's when Robin said he didn't want to see him no more. How did he take that? He went mental. Said how he wanted to be compensated for his time and effort. He said how if we wanted the kid, he wanted an adoption fee. Why didn't you report it or tell us? Because you would have taken Robin off us. We thought if we just split, he'd never find us. He only found us by chance the first time. I wasn't going to let anything happen to Robin. And I thought it could have been him knocking the kid about. Good judge of character, eh? Don't be so hard on yourself. You're right about someone knocking him senseless. So we were going to run away at find your squat. Then we got into the crash. And then I saw all that jewellery. I thought I saw a way of getting Pressman off our backs. I'm sorry. Paid him off. I went straight round and gave him all the jewellery. Told him to get out of our hair for good. And then when I got back to the squat, that fella from the accident had turned up. Followed by you lot. The rest you know. That I swear Scarlet only hit that bloke to protect me. Heck of a story. I've got to get that guy off the street. Nothing back from CCTV in all units. Nothing yet. Okay, Mel, can you and Nate get over to Calico Street and speak to Robin? Let's make sure his story tallies with Stephen Scarlett's. Sure. Looks like they were doing what's best for Robin after all. Well, they went about it completely the wrong way. CPS are going to have fun sorting this one out, aren't they? <sighs> The station service should have told us about Robin's dad being released. But it's probably caught up in a mess of paperwork somewhere on somebody's death waiting to be posted. Well, from what we've been told, he's been terrorising Robin since he ran away. Oh, God, poor kid. Robin? Robin, PC Riders here to see you. Right. Blake's taken him. That's where he was going when we saw him on the estate. All units from 148 regarding a suspect in a green rover. Partial index, Mike India 66. This is now suspected child abduction. All units from Sierra Oscar, suspected child abduction. Suspect in a green rover. Partial index, Mike India 66. That's him. All units from Sierra Oscar 212. We have an eyeball suspect in green rover. Press back up over. Is there a problem? We've spoken once already, have they? Your boot, all right? Oi! Come in! Oi! Stop where you are! All right, son? Yeah? Stop. Let's get you out of there. Okay, I suppose. How's Stephen Scarlett? In a lot of trouble. Looks like he's a you. Yeah, I know. They're not mad at you, though. They really care about you. Dad said he cared about me. He probably does, in a weird way. Some people just get it all wrong. He was right when he first came back. He said he changed. And you believed him? He's my dad. I'm supposed to believe him. Oh no. It's like Steve said. He can't trust anyone. Well, it's funny that, because Steve did everything he could to try and keep you out of this. So maybe you can trust Steve and Scarlett, and you can trust me and Karen. Don't let one man destroy your faith in people. A lot of people stuck their necks out for you. Try and remember that, yeah? Well, are you okay? I'm fine. <coughs> I see you right here. Can I have a word? No more running away, you. Gary Charlton came round. OK, 
Kezi around some checks. Chrissy's the only one with a bike license. Looks like she masterminded the whole thing, dragged her husband and her brother down with her. Some victimless crime. You went against my orders today. I'm your sergeant. I set the agenda. I'm really sorry. But you stuck your neck out for that boy and it paid off. I like a cop who trusts their instincts despite what I might throw at them. Hope you didn't take it to heart. No worries, Sarge. This northern skin's tough, you know. It takes a lot more than a sudden softy to break me. Don't push it. Thanks would have been sufficient. Night, Sarge. Night. Next time on The Bill. Her skirt's ripped. You'll be showing him the ropes today, so be gentle. I'll be gentle? I want to gentle. Oh! Oh! I'm arresting you on suspicion of rape. You had intercourse with Paula Merrick. I'm not a rapist. <laughs> <laughs>